Alright, hello, this is Dimitri, and I'm doing another vlog today. So today's vlog is about how I feel about science and religion. Um, so it's going to be pretty heated, and I imagine that I'll get a lot of responses, and if, I, and if I do get a lot of responses, then they'll be very heated, and I don't really know what I hope to gain by posting this, because it may not get many responses at all, but I definitely want to get the thoughts out right now. So let's get started. Um, I'm only going to touch upon the very surface of this, of course, because I think it's only dogmatic and stupid and shallow people who aren't wa worth wasting time arguing with, who'd, you know, who'd really expect to hear your whole story on something, you know. And it's very primitive of people to take sides and things. And I've noticed this from people that I might classify as religious or people I might classify as atheists, and they classify themselves that way. But I always feel like there's a little bit more going on than in these narrow classifications. And even when people classify themselves as though they belong to a particular category, it's not a... You know, it, it, it's just... I, I don't think that they really understand that it's very easy to say, I'm a Christian, so I identify with other Christians, or I'm an atheist, or I identify with other atheists. Yet what you'll notice usually when you look at these people is that a lot of them have a lot of problems, interpersonal problems with other people. Um, they tend, the agreements that they see, feel that they have with other people, that they can agree upon basically a set of words together, are a bit unstable, very unstable in fact, because of course what I learned from being an avid reader most of my life, um, regrettably not so much recently, but I'm getting back into it, what I learned from being an avid reader is that, and, and a writer myself, is that words have incredibly, an uh, incredible multitude of meanings. The thing is that, and th th this is a very common postmodern theme, I definitely don't subscribe to anything in the way of a definite fixed truth. You know, I mean, I can already picture in my head right now a group of people that I know from my old community college, and... I might approach one of the, uh, uh, the group, and they might be talking down to religion or something. And I'll say to them, well, you know, technically you don't really know that the, the Earth is not 6,000 years old. I mean, you have a strong prejudice, which a lot of people, the majority of the human race seems to hold, that it is that. But, I mean, it, it, it might in fact, uh, that, uh, I mean, that, that that's v very very much older, but in reality, m maybe 6,000 years old. And of course, the, you can just imagine the, the, the wave of scoffing, saying, you know, you, you get out of here, you're totally ignorant, you don't know what you're talking about. It's a very ironic thing, though, because it, what I really want to say, and it's going to sound harsh and elitist, but it's probably the truth, um, is that I'm no more ignorant than anyone else. I mean, I may not be able to tell you off the top of my head what, you know, the last estimate of the Earth's um, age is. I haven't been keeping track of something like that. But I, but at one point, say in middle school, or elementary school, or high school, I would have been able to tell you. I'm just not one of those people who carries around um, a reserve of knowledge. It's like Gilles Deleuze said, and maybe I'm a bit hypocritical for quoting an int an intellectual, he doesn't claim to be an intellectual, but he said he hated people who carry around knowledge. I don't, I, I, I don't necessarily remember all the numbers now, but I read up on all of this stuff when I was very young, in fact. I, I was exposed to the same theories as many of my colleagues, and it's precisely because I was, it was so young that I was exposed to them that in the first place I don't remember most of what I read, but in the second place... That I know, though, that they're mere theories. Um, now, a little bit of background, and I'm going to brag a lot here, but I'm going to tell it like it is, because like the Greeks would supposedly say, you know, you don't want to pretend to a humility you don't have. If you're good at something, you, or you were good at something, you should you should make it cl plain. Um, well, several things. First of all, my parents are biochemists. And it's not out of some rebellion against my parents that I've rejected science or something like that. Um, it's a, it's a very, um, 
naive kind of Freudian explanation for things. I think the reality of the situation is much more complex. And I mean, I'm sure that there are a number of ideals which I should I should like to find in my parents, which I sh which I'd hope to ha have in common with them. But I, I certainly don't feel that children should take after their parents too much. I think it's very natural that that doesn't you know that that doesn't really happen in life. Um, but you know, I was raised by scientists, but that's that's marginal. Keep that in mind. Uh, all that I'm trying to say is I've been around scientists. I've I've been around laboratories. I've been inside laboratories since I was like five, and I've met people who are scientific, and I've noted their characters, character traits, the way that they approach things, the way they saw the world since I was very young. And um, I've observed scientists and non-scientists, and the thing I've realized is throughout my whole life, and what's been obvious for me, scientists are just people, prone to the same kind of fallibility as anyone else, and prone sometimes maybe to being a bit pretentious, like like, like any other group of enthusiasts, um, prone sometimes to being elitist, but not necessarily. And um, some of them are good people, but some of them can be fairly, um, you know, sim sim simplistically minded. Like, they, they'll take something simple and they'll run with it, to a considerably complex degree, but essentially, you know, as far as life's concerned, they're, you know, they're just people who want things to be logical, more or less. But as for my own experience with science, like, I've been an avid reader since I was about five years old, and the thing about it is, and here I'm going to brag, but whatever, I think it was only like three years between like, my first science book, you know, I, I mean, I think that was the title of the book, is, like, my first science book, and, like, I was reading uh, sections from the science desk reference from my parents, and I don't know where they got it, but I think that, I think that they, they had it in their own labs, and this is professional-grade stuff, and in, six, in the sixth grade, I basically, um, you know, I was in the Gifted and Talented Education program, and a girl passed me this note. These kids were passing around notes in the class, and they knew, of course, that I, I, I couldn't tolerate something like that, because I was being defiant of the teacher. So what I did was I took out some index cards, and I started writing on them. And what I was writing was from the science desk reference, and I had it in my memory. I think it was the equation for work or something, and force or something and stuff like that, and a few of my per personal aphorisms, because I think I might have been already getting into philosophy at that time since I'd watched The Matrix. And I think I, I remember, although I might be kind of confusing this, it might have just been be fictional, but I think that I remember a, uh, a young man telling me, one of my peers, you know, that work doesn't mean that, work means this. Or force doesn't mean that, and they would make fun of me for it. Now fast forward a few years to me just getting out of community college because, I don't know, I might go back or something. Um, because I wanted to join, you know, the workforce, so to speak. And, you know, do some non-intellectual stuff. And I look up some videos of this guy named Brian Dunning. And he's like your total scientist, not scientist, scientist. And he, I think, makes a part of his living from debunking pseudoscience, which basically means anything that's not science, he puts down. And he's talking about spirituality and how people refer to the immediate experience of energy and things like chi and prana. And he says, energy, the formula for energy is the capacity for something to do work. I thought, you know, you're probably one of the, you're probably pretty much the same guy that I knew in sixth grade. But exactly. You're just, um, it, it's, it's the same exact thing, do you see? Um, I think that a lot of people jump onto the scientific bandwagon, so to speak, and because they want to find some kind of absolute truth. And this makes me cautious because it seems to suggest a kind of almost fascism in our culture, the kind of notion that popular science can give us the truth, 
Now, I've been, like I said, I've been reading um, my whole life. In later years, it, I've become, I think, more of a slow reader, but I was always someone of a slow reader. I've become less bookish. But, like, I was reading, like, Heinlein in fifth grade and, like, Stephen Hawking in the seventh grade. And my whole point is not just to brag, but to say I've been exposed to this stuff. I just never would think... See, I think when people address things like theory and fact, they don't really know what they're talking about. They think it's something that they can share in common with other people, and it's that simple, and it's not. If you've grown up with this stuff, you know, like, science for me, and this is where I'm making my point about science, is very interesting, very tantalizing. I'd go to it quite frequently. I'd use the science desk reference and love it. Um like a friend, and yet, at the same time, it was always, it seemed cold and impersonal. It didn't answer all my questions, and, and this is the key thing, it always seemed like just a corner of the room, just a, a, a dogmatic corner of the mind, and a big building beyond which there might be incomprehensible depths. And you see, uh, as a postmodern thinker, um, it's quite apparent to me that, you know, there may not even be a truth beyond language, or if it is, it's very personal. It's certainly not something that we can understand, although I probably shouldn't say the word certainly. Um, certainly not something that we could understand, see, my, my throat clogs when I'm about to use a bad word, psychosomatically. Um, certainly not something that we could understand, uh, intersubjectively with such clarity. I think that's very intellectually unserious. And somehow I think that the people who take scientific theory to be fact are really talking out of their asses and haven't really, truly gone into depth with this, haven't really grown up with it. Now, by high school, I'd kind of lost my interest in science. I remember in seventh grade, I was really fond of science, especially physics. I remember in physical education class, I'd be jogging. I said, you know, we really, man, we shouldn't have physical education class. I meant this like as though it were a fact. We shouldn't have physical education class. We should have physics classes. By high school, I didn't have that mentality anymore because I realized science couldn't answer everything I wanted to. And literature offered me an answer, but also not literature, but music as well as becoming much more auditory than visual, so to speak. And anyone who says like that's like scientifically inadequate doesn't know what he's talking about. Like. Uh, I, I'm speaking from experience here, like, um, I did enjoy reading, but over the course of my life, I began to rely much more upon my ears, and I began to rely more on listening to lectures, and, um, listening to people speak, and music, and things like that, than what I would take in with my eyes. It's a very experiential thing, not something you could scientifically disprove. Anyway, um, and the reason that you can't scientifically disprove it is because we don't really necessarily know that the mind's confined to the brain. But anyway, being an avid reader, and, and reading not just science, but a lot of literature, looking into philosophy from a young age, drawing uncomfortable attention to my intellect from teachers and students, made me very sensitive, and by high school I became very depressed, and my grades started to suffer, I ended up in community college. And the thing is, though, I don't regret any of that, I think we all go through a loss of innocence. I lost my faith in science in high school, and shortly a after high school, I think, and mind you, I'd taken some AP classes in biology, not that I passed them, but um, shortly after high school, um, I just had this moment when I realized, you know, everything in science was just pictures and numbers. Science, the science I learned in my classes, and even probably the science that I learned from my own books. The books that I read, like Stephen Hawking, and Heinlein, and Asimov, and all of them. And the science desk reference, even. And, um, who else? I, I don't remember who else. 